to Bluegrass On Stage. Today we are so fortunate to have from Berkeley, California, Lori Lewis and Tom Rosen. Lori is a two-time Grammy Award winner and she also holds the title of Female Vocalist of the Year with the International Bluegrass Music Association. So let's get picking. It's Bluegrass On Stage. <laughs> a Hazel Dickens song from our latest album, uh, which is called Guest House. It came out on High Tone Records not too long ago, and Tom's going to sing another song from that album right now. Thank you for that fine introduction, Lori. You're so welcome, Tom. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to do another one from that album. <laughs> this, one is, this one is called Just a Lie. Those 
good old days were not so good to me Back on the farm in 1933 Depression took most everything we had Those good old days were mostly pretty bad Those good old days, they brought my family down Just like a plow Steep and rocky ground Those hard times Tore my family All apart I still can't feel That cold wind in my heart Tip your hat Wave goodbye The good old days is just a lie Sometimes streak of lean Picking up coal Along the railroad tracks Why would you want To have those hard times back Tip your hat Wave goodbye The good old days It's just a lie times that we had But you can't spend a silver sun and moon And you can't eat a lonesome fiddle tune I'd like to do the title cut from our first duet album. We recorded this uh, shortly after we were in a bad car accident. We'd kind of been planning on doing a duet album for a long time, and we just decided it's best not to keep putting things off. It's a song about two trees that grow together in Northern California where I grew up. And uh, they are the California Live Oak and the Bay Laurel. Grow side by side in the valley. 
shiver with each breeze with their sweet scent your heart she will win with their sweet scent your heart she tall and so strong and I thought that his heart would be fair and his words when he spoke were as sweet in their sound as the laurel's sweet scent in the air as the laurel's sweet scent in Buttram thing I did there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hey, Mr. Douglas. Well, do you want to do um, Bad Seed? Yeah. Yeah. The song that was written by Liz Meyer, uh, and it's about basically reaping what you sow. And it could be particularly about genetically modified organisms or GMOs. We're not sure what Liz had in mind, but it's a great song called Bad Seed. <laughs> think they can do as they please well they read the book but they pay no heed they lie straight faced with an ace up their sleeve well that's what happens when you sow bad seed if bad seed is all you've been sowing no darn good is all you'll be growing i'll tell you what my daddy told me you can't harvest any good when you sow bad Some people think they can have their fun Well, they're always looking out for number one And never pay for the wrongs they do That bad seed always catches up with you If bad seed is all you've been sowing No darn good is all you'll be growing 
growing I'll tell you what my daddy told me You can't harvest any good when you sow It's really quite a pleasure to be here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, playing on bluegrass on stage. It's a beautiful sunny day outside, unlike yesterday when we played outside. <laughs> and the beautiful Michigan rain. Here's a song it has nothing to do with the rain or the sun. Or Michigan. Or Michigan, that's right. <laughs> It's a, it's a song, it's a kind of a warning song about love. It's called Don't Get Too Close. Don't get too close. You know I think I can love you. Don't get too close. I've got my own life to lead. Love you, don't get too close. A heartache or something I don't need. You breezed in like a south wind in December. So warm and so surprising, so sweet and tantalizing that I believe to my soul that I begin to remember feelings that I thought were dead and buried. I could love you Don't get too close I've got my own life to lead When I lay me down to sleep I don't want to be dreaming of you Don't get too close A heartache is something I don't to the cold I bundled up my dreams and pulled my heart inside I didn't realize I thought it part of growing old but here are all these feelings flowing like a springtime don't get too close you know I think I could love you don't get too my own life to leave when I lay me down to sleep I don't want to be dreaming of you don't get too close a heartache or something I don't I can love you, don't get too close, I've got my own life to lead, when I lay me down to sleep, I don't want to be dreaming of you, don't 
Don't get too close A heartache or something I don't need Don't get too close A heartache or something I don't need Well, welcome to Bluegrass On Stage. Today we are so pleased to have, from Berkeley, California, Grammy Award winning Lori Lewis. Well, welcome to Michigan. Thank you. It's great to be back here. Good. Now I understand that you have some Michigan roots. That's right. I lived in Ann Arbor from age three to eight. And you know, those are pretty important years. <clears throat> when my family moved back to California from Michigan, it just about broke my heart. <laughs> did it? <laughs> I thought I'd never get used to living in California. But of course I did and I love it there. That's where I was born. Well, that's great. And we were out here because my dad was a, was a doctor and he was doing his internship at, in Ann Arbor. Great. Now, did you uh, get a taste of the Michigan winters then? Yeah, I just remember wearing snowsuits and being so bundled up and barely being able to move and going outside and trying to play in the snow and then getting freezing cold and coming back and standing over the heater. It's mostly <laughs> what I remember, looking out this, we had a big, plate glass window mm -hmm. in, in our little house. And um, I just remember standing at that window watching the snowfall. Michigan winters <laughs> are beautiful. I gotta say, I enjoy winter here because I, I've come to the conclusion that I have to enjoy it because I live here. And so we ski and we have a lot of fun in the winter here. So Berkeley, California, now where does bluegrass fit into that? Well, you know, Berkeley's a pretty interesting place because just about any form of anything you wanted to get into, you'd find a support group in Berkeley that is completely into it and knows more about it than most people. <clears throat> um, it's just that kind of a place. It's, it's kind of, um, it's very eclectic there. And so I heard bluegrass first at the Berkeley Folk Festival when I was a teenager. Okay, I and was wondering how your history with bluegrass came about. Yeah, I just, who did you hear? Well, at, I, at that festival I heard the Greenbrier Boys, I heard Doc Watson and uh, Gene Ritchie, lots of, of really roots, um, you know, country roots singers and players. Mm -hmm. And um, I, just, I just loved it. There wasn't any of that music in my family. We mostly at home listened to, you know, classical music radio. It was on sort of like Muzak all uh -huh. day. And my dad would, would do quizzes like, what's that instrument there? What? And we'd listen. I, the, the correct answer was always flugelhorn. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come about with your fiddles and, and your guitars? Did you are you self-taught? I played classical violin when I was a kid. You did. I started when I was twelve and I played the violin because my parents just said, We think you should play an instrument and we think it should be the violin because you seem to have a good ear. So how about it? And being a dutiful daughter, I said Okay, and I, I loved the instrument. I always loved it, but I must say I kind of dreaded my lessons, and I wasn't really cut out to be a classical violinist. Mm -hmm. you know? But now you're writing. Um, when did you begin realizing that you've got some talent for the writing? Oh, I, I love to write, and um, to, for me it's just looked like my best form of self-expression mm -hmm. and I think I started to write just out of sheer jealousy. Really? <laughs> I was in a band with Kathy Kellick okay. in the good old persons, the original good old persons and um, Kathy was this great writer you know she'd come to a rehearsal and she'd have this new song and we'd work it out and it was just was wonderful and it was all hers and you know I'd come I'd like search for a good song and then I'd work it out with the band and then it would come out on Emmy Lou Harris's next record or something and they'd say, oh, you do that Emmy Lou Harris song. And go, no, I want my songs, you know? And, and I think it was just uh, watching Kathy and, and, and seeing that just made me want that too. So I started writing. Well, you do a very good job. You've got, well, thank you. you've got a couple Grammys. Well, um, one Grammy and a Grammy nomination. Okay. A few Grammy nominations, but yeah. That's, that's, quite, that's quite a feat right there. Now, let's go back to your family. So you decided that you're gonna do some bluegrass music. You go home and tell your 
Dr. Dad, mm -hmm. think I'm going to be a bluegrass musician, and what did he say? Well, it wasn't until I was actually in my 20s that I started playing bluegrass, and my dad was not too happy. <laughs> but I had already dropped out of college to take a job as a, at a dance studio, as a um, business manager of a modern dance studio. Uh -huh. So I was already in the doghouse. <laughs> I had already done something far worse than play a different kind of music. Uh -huh. So when I got back and in, got into music again and started playing fiddle, my, I think my dad was just very relieved Great. <laughs> that I wasn't going to be a dancer. Well, I'm sure they're really proud of you now. You've, you've got yes, a lot of accomplishments. Yes, I have a really, really supportive family. Great. Well, let's talk about your new disc. Okay. okay. It's on High Tone Records. I'm very happy to be at a label that's so close by. They're in Oakland, California, right next to Berkeley. I could like ride my bike there if I wanted to. Uh -huh. If I want to have a label meeting, it's just so easy, same time zone. And so we're really the first bluegrass album, the, the Guest House album is the first bluegrass album that High Tone has put out. Mm -hmm. They consider themselves to be a roots singer-songwriter label. Mm -hmm. And so they've had, you know, rockabilly bands and uh, Dave Alvin, uh, who's a California singer-songwriter who's really a, a real rocker. Uh -huh. You know, the, um, a lot of his albums and um, Tom Russell and Katie Moffat. There's a huge list of pe wonderful people on that label and I'm very happy to be a part of it. So your disc, uh, you've got a lot of originals on there. Is it all original? No, it's not. This this time for this project with Tom and myself, we just tried to find the best songs we could wherever we could find them. And we're lucky we have also a bunch of friends who are great writers. Mm -hmm. So we went to our friend Liz Meyer and uh, <clears throat> she gave us a whole bunch of songs, but one of them we really loved, uh, Bad Seed. And Cy Khan, we played on Cy's album that he recorded the, that song on, Just just a Lie. Uh -huh. And we didn't get to play on that song. <laughs> so, <laughs> sort of our revenge. We took the whole song <laughs> and recorded it. And uh, I, the Jim Ringer song is just is one we've known for a while. Mm -hmm. He's a California writer. Just decided that would be a great I one know to you're a big Hazel Dickens fan. Big Hazel Dickens fan. Yeah, we've got two of Hazel's songs on the album. And one of them, uh, The Scars from an Old Love, she actually picked for me to sing um, at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival when they honored her there. Oh, great. She got to pick the uh, bands that were going to do her songs, and then she got to pick the songs that each band was going to do. So that one she picked for us. And, uh, that's quite it just an seemed honor. like a really, really good fit. I guess, I guess. Now, the Home Place, that's, I gotta say, one of my favorite songs. I love that song. Well, thank you. And uh, did you, I, I know, did you arrange this song yourself? How, how yes. do you work that out? Well, um, I heard the song, I heard Kate Long sing it just a cappella in a, uh, the little chapel at Davis and Elkins College at a song swap there. And she sang it, and everybody just sort of joined in on the chorus. And by the end of the song, I was just in tears. Mm -hmm. And I went up and introduced myself. I said, I got to I gotta have that song. <laughs> so she sent me a tape of it. And I sat down and started working it out. And then we got together, the band got together, and just arranged it. It is, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful, and that's where you, you won a, an award for that song. Yeah, it won the IBMA Song of the Year, and uh, I wish we'd done that song on your show. I've just completely spaced it out, but um, it does sound better with a quartet singing it yeah, than a, just yeah. a duet, although it works about any way you do it because it's just a great song. Mm -hmm. um, but people seem to really respond to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it seems like in almost everybody's life, they, there's, they've had to deal with leaving a beloved place or watching it change dramatically right. or, you know, packing up their grandparents' stuff or their parents' 
house. And so. It's a great storyline and you do it so well. Oh, thank you. So Good what material. do you like to do when you're not on the road and playing music? What are some of your fun pastimes? Oh, let's see. I love to ride my bike. Uh, I've got an old road bike and I just, I love to ride. I love to walk, hike in the woods. That's in, a, in the hills. Mm -hmm. I like to go to the beach. So you're uh, an outdoor person, it sounds I guess, like. I guess I'm an outdoor person, and I like to read a good book. Okay, all right. Now, we were up in Hart, Michigan just the other day. I caught your show up there, and we happened to be driving by some beautiful Michigan maples, and you said, I'd like to just get out on the lawn and roll by the trees. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew, you were, I knew you were an outdoor person. So what's in the future? What you got up your sleeve? Uh, well, I'm working on a new solo album, which I'm hoping will be out later on this year. And we have plans to record a band album as well. Um, the end, uh, beginning of July, we're going to be on an Alaskan cruise. Oh, what fun. It'll be Tom and myself and Todd Phillips on bass and Craig Smith playing banjo and Scott Huffman playing guitar. So we figured as long as we were going to have six days of playing together, we may as well go in the studio and record after that. So we'll be doing that. Is this your first cruise? Yes. Well, that's well we normally, Tom and I do a lot of cruises, but they're on little rafts on rivers. Okay. Rather than on a <laughs> giant boats in the ocean. So this will be your first cruise liner, like yes, luxury liner. Yes, exactly. Oh, that'll be a lot of fun. I think so. Well, speaking of Tom, we're going to get Tom in the studio here in a couple minutes, and we'll talk with him and Lori together. I choose to see not the things that be or the miles and the years that are gone. I pay no heed to tomorrow's need. I'm blinded by the snow and the sun. Till all I can see is my darling and me like young flowers blooming in spring. Like the flowers we grew and the other I knew But the rose of the San Joaquin Where the gypsies will dance while stealing a glance At a sea that might blow in the wind And the fields are worked in a sweat-stained shirt till the move on again and the tramps and hawkers with stories wild beguiled the young boy's dream enticing me to leave my home and the roads of the San Joaquin Well, I've watched the rise of light in the sky Where the sun climbs out of the sea Seen giants fall in mountains tall Where the lumbermen cut down the tree I've played in the sand in the Gulf Coast wind Fell asleep in the grass tall and green Nowhere I've been would I go back again Except to the San Joaquin Home is hard and strong, and the 
and the miles are turning to years And the tramps and hawkers in every town Oh God, but it brings me to tears When I got home I found just a flower on a mound Where it's shame the green grass is a spring It grew from the grave of my darling little girl San Joaquin Welcome Tom Rolls into Bluegrass on stage with Lori Lewis. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Do you Proud have any here. Michigan roots like Lori? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Do you? Yeah, um, my first car was uh, made in Michigan, 1963. 63 what? It was the 64 Falcon. <laughs> but it came, it came out, I got it in September. My grandfather got it in 1963. Uh huh, and that's what you drove? Yeah, I still have it. You do? I do. Seriously, does he? Yeah, yeah he, he does. It. Wow. Gosh, that's amazing. Can't get rid of a good car can't, like that. Can't beat a Michigan built instrument or vehicle. <laughs> so let's hear, how did you two meet? We met on a radio station, actually. I was in, um, I was playing in this band from San Diego. I lived in San Diego for about a year and a half, and I played in this uh, band that played, it was a string band, but we played 20s and 30s music. And we came up to Berkeley uh, we were on tour and our bass player couldn't make a radio show so we asked around if there was a bass player who could join us and um, Lori <laughs> showed up. She's a great really? bass player. Yeah. Well you two blend so Thank well you. with your harmonies. Um, where at what point did you decide to team up together and start a band? I think it was after my first solo album came out. Uh, well Tom had moved to the Bay Area in the meantime. Um, and had played a few just casual gigs with the Grant Street String Band, which was just sort of in the process of breaking up. And um, then I did my first solo album, and when I put together a band to play gigs, to do that music, um, I asked Tom to be in the band, and we started singing together and never quit. And how many years has that been? Well, that was 1986. Really? So, so you long have time. a long 19 history. years. You yeah. have a long history together. That's great. You guys do. You do so well. I mean, it's almost like you can read each other's minds up there. You see that. Well, you know, um, I, I don't have the classical background, and Lori does, but I started getting into the music around the same time she did in mm -hmm. in my early 20s, and we seem to have heard the same music at the same time. We come from, I wouldn't say similar backgrounds, 
but um, we're, we were young at the same time, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know how certain certain things happen at a certain time. There was a big. Uh, I got into bluegrass because um, it just seems that's what a lot of uh, young people my age who are college mm -hmm. era people were, were getting into. You know, I you know, I went to Woodstock in 1969, but after. I was kind of into uh, rock and roll music, but after that I was searching for something, I don't know, every time I heard it on the radio, just little bits of it, whether it was, um, you know, a theme song from Bonnie and Clyde or uh, Deliverance, mm -hmm. my ears perked up. Right. Now, had either of you ever moved to the center of things like Nashville area or Kentucky, or have you always been off to the West Coast? I'm originally from Connecticut. You are? Yeah. Went to the school. The great bluegrass state of Connecticut. <laughs> Went to school in Boston. I first heard old time music and bluegrass. Well, I heard old time music in Boston. Started playing the fiddle and mandolin. Then, then I moved out to Arizona right after that, and that's where I started uh, playing some bluegrass. I see. Have you ever um, been with uh, touring bluegrass bands other than Laurie's? No. No. I played in a in a bluegrass band in Tucson and one in Flagstaff, Arizona. We toured the Southwest, but it's not. The Speaking of touring, I know you two worked so hard. I looked at your schedule, I can't imagine trying to keep up with that. But you've recently come back from China. Tell That's us right. about that. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, uh, first off, I wasn't really aware Chinese were big bluegrass fans. Well, it wasn't a blue. We played at an um, international music festival. I see. Did There's that, all different kinds of music there. I see. So you were part of a... Uh, a bunch of Americans that had gone over to showcase their... Most, a, mostly Americans, yeah. but not just Americans. There's uh, African music from Cameroon and uh, a Brazilian samba group. Wow. They Well, they're based in San Francisco now, mm -hmm. but... Um, not an Irish band. Yeah. Where and there was play? a clown. There was a clown band from in, from uh, Indiana too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they touched all uh, aspects of our American music culture here. Yeah. Where did you play in China? Just in Shanghai. Um, there's a big park there called uh, Century Park, I think it's called, and it was an outdoor festival. Three stages going all day long, all this different music, and we were just part of it. I see. How many days were you there? We, well, the we, festival was seven days. Yeah. We oh. were there about 12 days. Oh, did you take time to enjoy the country then? At the end, we got to sightsee, and it was we, it was just amazing. It's such a amazing place. Uh, China, as you know from the news, is really changing very rapidly, mm -hmm. and, and Shanghai is a very futuristic city. It's architects have carte blanche, and it seems whatever whimsical idea they could come up with. They say okay, and they build it, and it's just, it's just amazing. And then a couple blocks incredible. away, you, you can uh, be in uh, old old style um, 19th century. It seems to us, really? China, yeah. So it's very amazing. Sounds fascinating. Place. Plus, I never got to eat turtle before. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to eat turtle. We ate a lot of stuff. There were big giant banquets. I hope we didn't eat dog. I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping. <laughs> well, let's talk about your new disc. Uh, you would uh, put this together yourself. Uh, you produced it yourself. Your CD Jubilee. Oh, my CD. Yeah, um, yeah. Lori helped me produce it. it we, it's co-produced. Um, I sing all the songs on it, but I, I do sing some duets with Lori. I, I had a lot of great players. Uh, luckily, you know, we've been doing this for so long that we know a lot of great. We've, we're great friends with a lot of great players. So mm -hmm. I have people like Mike Marshall, Daryl Anger, David, David Greer, um, Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips. I have Herb Peterson singing. Great. You know, um, Craig Smith, our our beloved banjo players on there too, and Rob Ikes plays some dobro. Oh, wow. You know, so we, yeah. I'm just really happy to uh, do this. I'm real proud of it. It's it's on Dog Boy Records. Dog Boy. That's yeah. your T-shirts. Records of bite. <laughs> Yeah, I designed the label. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's a great label. It's really fun. It's, it kind of shows your sense of humor. It's a trusted name in the Southwest since 1980. Great, great. <laughs> so what is like, say, one of the highlights that you two have done together as far as some of your music jobs or just something that's I mean, really... I was, if you don't mind, I yeah, was thinking about this recently. It's funny that you asked, but we were extremely lucky to play the Grand Ole Opry. Um, four or five times, and uh -huh. we got to meet people like Hank Snow and uh -huh. stuff like that. And 
It was just amazing. Roy Acuff, and that was pretty amazing. We've been on uh, Prairie Home Companion. Just recently, we uh, did a show. Uh, uh, I got together with uh, two other women singers doing a trio, and uh, Tom was in the backup band. It was Maria Muldaur and Linda Ronstadt and myself. Great. And that was that was a thrill. Oh well, I was just thinking one of the. Um, more memorable uh, musical events that we were able to do was um, be on tour for 30 days with the Del McCurry Band and J.D. Crow as part of the Rounder Records. Great. Sure, so we traveled all over the country doing that. And Great. We got yeah. to tour a lot, you know, play uh -huh. in places like China and Japan, and we go to Europe about every other year. We played in Bulgaria and Slovenia and the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic, by the way, has more bluegrass bands than the state of California. Does it? <laughs> really, they're really probably good Probably more players. bluegrass bands than the state of Kentucky. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, I can see that because when you go down to the IBMA, the International Bluegrass Music Association, you see a lot of bands from a lot of different countries, bluegrass sure. bands, and they're so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like they've almost got it more down to a science where they, they pick their instruments. Well, they're very serious about it. They are, they are. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hear about your websites. Why don't you kind of let us know where we can contact you and... Uh... Well, the easiest way is uh, laurielewis.com, L-A-U-R-I-E-L-E-W-I-S dot so You've got your um, CDs and all your material on there that we can purchase. Yeah, we've, and... we've got our schedule. We've got uh, a whole page of Tom's t-shirt designs. We've got uh, we do these river rafting trips that I think I touched on a little bit, uh -huh. and there's a page there that talks about them, and you can find out all about the river trips, and um, just sort of a what's new. I've got a list of books I've been reading on there, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, <laughs> old interviews. Great. You can scroll around, find things in there. All right, we'd like to do a set of fiddle tunes for you now. This one uh, consists of a first one's a Kentucky tune called the Wild Rose of the Mountain. The second one is called The Devil Chased Me Around the Stump. That comes from southern Tennessee, northern Georgia. And the last one also is a Kentucky tune um, called Glory at the Meeting House. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, we'd like to thank Tom and Lori for being here today. We'd like to thank you for watching Bluegrass on Stage. Yeehaw.